Hi, welcome to this Health App webinar. My name is Chiska Borras. I'm a partner at Bristos. I specialize in life sciences regulatory law, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie Hatzel. I'm an associate in the Bristos Life Sciences Regulatory Team with Chiska. Today we're going to be talking about health apps and how sometimes they stray into being regulated medical devices, which can make them illegal if they haven't gone through the proper approval processes. Health apps are an increasingly common feature on app stores. You may have seen some of the examples which are on the screen right now. Uh, the kinds of health apps which you can find on app stores include cognitive behavioral therapy companion apps, which give their users some exercises to help them with their mental health. Or you can have symptom checkers where users can look up whatever their health complaint is and get a recommendation on what kind of health problem it could be. You can even have ovulation trackers, um, which can be used either to assist people who are trying to get pregnant, or they can be used for contraception. Now, all of these health apps are very useful for their users, um, but they are also medical devices, and that means that they are regulated, uh, and they have to be CE marked before they can be commercialized in the European Union or in the UK. Now, the examples shown on the screen here have all correctly been CE marked as medical devices, and that means that they can lawfully be sold in the UK and in the EU. But there are many examples of similar apps out there which are not CE marked. So what is it that makes a health app such as this a medical device? Well, a health app becomes a medical device when it meets the statutory definition of a medical device, which is shown on the screen right now. In short, something is regulated as a medical device in the EU or in the UK when it is first an object, that is, a thing, an instrument, an apparatus, an appliance, including standalone software, with a medical intended purpose, one of those listed on the screen there, such as diagnosis of disease, prediction of disease, alleviation of disease, diagnosis, treatment, compensation for an injury or disability, investigation, modification of anatomy or a physiological or pathological process or state, or the control or support of conception, and also the prevention of conception. And such a device is a medical device when it achieves this intended purpose through physical means. That is not pharmacological, immunological, or metabolic means, uh, in which case something would be regulated as a medicine. Thank you, Jamie. Indeed, the intended purpose of the app will be essential for determining whether it is a medical device or not. It will be a medical device if the manufacturer intends it to be used for a medical purpose. And that intention is based on a set of objective uh, parameters, based on the way in which the app is presented to users, and that would include advertising material, the way it's uh, stored, and the instructions for use that will accompany the medical device. So all of this needs to be taken into account in conjunction for the purposes of determining the intended purpose and whether it is a medical intended purpose or not. You might have seen disclaimers that come along with uh, apps, and um, the question is uh, whether these disclaimers will work or not, whether just by uh, putting a disclaimer on your app uh, you will not make it a medical device or vice versa? And the answer is uh, not really. Um, the disclaimer can clarify the intended purpose of the device, but you need to take into account all of the other materials that I've just mentioned to assess the intended purpose of the medical device and whether it's a medical device or not. The disclaimer in such cases will not assist unless it's a, a very borderline case. You have two examples in this slide that you can come across. 
the first is a disclaimer that could be used in a app for diagnosing melanoma and the mere fact that you put uh, that this melanoma diagnostic app uh, is not for diagnosing your moles it will not take it outside of the definition of a medical device Having said that, there are situations where your disclaimer can be useful to modulate the use of your medical device. Um, imagine a situation where you have a software system that supports the rich man and main practices and procedures at a hospital ward. And there are nurses that supervise said risk management practices and procedures. If you use the app, to supplement the existing systems and procedures and you have a nurse that supervises said practices and procedures, um, you can use the disclaimer to clarify the classification of the device and to make it clear that this app is not going to by itself control practices and procedures and make decisions based on them. So in some instances, it can be helpful to modulate the function of the app and in turn to classify the app or the device. Whether an app is a medical device or not always depends on what the claimed intended purpose of that app is. And that intended purpose is assessed based on how the device is presented, as Chiska has just explained. But how do you spot an app which has a claimed medical purpose? While we had that long list of medical purposes that we've just looked at, sometimes it's hard to assess based on the way that the app is presented whether or not it has a medical purpose, and so whether it has a medical device. Admittedly, sometimes it's very clear. You know, If you have a fitness app that claims to give you rock-hard abs in just 15 minutes, that's probably not a medical device because it clearly doesn't have a medical purpose. It's all about assisting you in your fitness and showing you what sort of exercises that you should do. But sometimes it's more borderline. So if we look at the examples which are on the screen right now, say a device uses medical data about an individual patient to draw conclusions about them. You know, it analyzes that data in order to generate a diagnosis. Well, that is admittedly a fairly clear example. That's a diagnosis of a disease which is a medical purpose and therefore this app is likely to be a medical device. As the examples on the screen show, an app which uses a patient's individual data to draw medical conclusions about them or which makes recommendations to their doctor for how they should be treated is likely to be a medical device. But then you have other kinds of app which also appear to have medical purposes but which fall on the other side of the line and aren't in fact medical device apps. For instance, if you have an app which just stores and retrieves data, that could be something like a hospital file management system or something similar to a digital ebook of a medical textbook would not be a medical device. And an app which provides medical data about the public health of a community as a whole, rather than just an individual. For instance, that could be software which estimates the prevalence of disease in a given locality based on the types of web searches which are being made there, is unlikely to be a medical device. Another way which we approach things when we're advising a client on whether or not their app is going to be a medical device is whether or not they use any of the key words which are shown on the screen, things such as triage, detects, measures, prognosis, symptom checker, or reduce doctor time. Any of these keywords are indicative that something is likely to be a medical device because that indicates that they are fulfilling one of the medical purposes which we looked at earlier. Thanks, Jamie. Let's look at an example now of whether something would be a medical device or not, taking into account all of what we have said till now. So imagine for a second that you have an app and this app requires you to introduce certain personal characteristics. You have a list here, but it could be other things. This particular app is looking into uh, skin characteristics, so you will uh, 
like have to introduce certain elements around your your skin in particular about your skin concern and once all of the data is introduced the app will uh, throw out certain results uh, all based on the information that the user will have provided and the way in which the results will be presented um, as, as are as you can see on the screen um, let's imagine that you have a certain percentage of chances of having uh, different conditions slash diseases like eczema, psoriasis, acne and imagine that this app contains a disclaimer stating that the results are not intended to be a diagnosis or to substitute uh, medical advice well, this um, will be a medical device and despite the disclaimer, the reality is that the app has a clear intended medical purpose for providing a diagnosis, um, even if the way in which the results are presented are in the way of an estimation of the probabilities of having a specific skin condition or disease. And all of that will be given um, based on a medical information that you will have had to provide into the app. This app will probably be used by users to establish whether or not they need to go to the doctor or to a pharmacist for advice on their skin and their skin concern. The results uh, might also be used by the user to decide whether or not to then go and purchase an over-the-counter medicine or treatment without taking any professional advice. Um, and as such, it drives the clinical decision making of of the user which clearly makes it a medical device so in contrast to the worked example which chiska has just walked through the uh, example of an app which we're looking at on the screen now is not in fact a medical device that may not seem intuitive because it seems to do much the same thing based on certain information it presents a probability that a given individual in a given age range has a particular skin condition. The reality is though that what this app is doing is really just presenting information which could be found in a medical textbook about skin complaints. Unlike the previous slide where users are presented with an individualized estimation of their most likely skin complaints based on a wide range of individual medical data about them, which includes their age and their sex, but also other information about them, such as a description of their skin complaint, its location, their weight and their height. Here in this particular example, users are simply presented with a list of the most common rashes for people of their sex and age group. Really, this app simply stores and presents information in raw form and doesn't perform any kind of operation on data which is presented to it and so it is not a medical device. So, uh, now you have identified that a particular app is a medical device. What to do next? The C mark is the symbol that shows that a medical device complies with EU law. Um, similarly, a UKCA mark is the symbol that shows that a medical device complies with Great Britain law. Um, this UKCA mark will become compulsory in the future, but C mark products uh, can be able to be placed on the market in Great Britain for some years uh, to come. The C mark is given when uh, the conformity assessment is completed. And the conformity assessment is a process by means of which the compliance of the medical device uh, with general safety and performance requirements and other aspects of the regulatory framework are assessed. The manufacturer of the medical device will have to submit documentation that will describe the device in detail and will be supported by clinical evidence which will support the safety and performance of the device. And the manufacturer will also have to implement a quality management system for the purposes of lawfully 
commercializing their medical device. For some class one medical devices, and that is the lower risk class of medical devices that you can get, the manufacturer can perform the conformity assessment by itself and self-declare the class one medical device. But this actually will be a rarely an option now that we have the definition of medical devices under the EU medical devices regulation because of the way in which the risk classification rules uh, work. For all other medical devices, so class two and above, the conformity assessment will have to be conducted by a notified body. And this is basically a body with whom the manufacturer contracts. It is a third party certification organization that is accredited uh, to con conduct conformity assessments under the regulatory framework. Given the current situation, um, and that is the new law having come into application last year, there is currently a, a lack of notified bodies and there's a big demand for their services. And this means that it will take a long time to get a medical device conformity assessed by a notified body. However, this is absolutely essential if you have a medical device that is not a class one. It doesn't sound very appealing, does it, undergoing a conformity assessment? As Chiska said, there's a real lack of notified body capacity to conduct it. It's really expensive. It takes a long time. You have to produce a lot of documentation and evidence in order to get your medical device CE marked. But unfortunately, it really is an essential step, and it's one that you just can't get around. Uh, commercialising a non-CE marked medical device in the UK or in the EU would be a really bad idea. It is illegal everywhere, both in the UK and in the EU, and in some member states in the EU, it is a criminal offence. Regulators who are responsible for medical devices, such as the UK's MHRA, also have various enforcement powers to take proactive steps to remove unlawful medical devices from the market. So they can just order you to stop selling an illegal medical device in the UK. And if you breach an MHRA enforcement order like that, that is punishable by a fine and up to 51 weeks in prison. So there's some really toothy penalties if you decide that CE marking is just too much hard work. Commercialization of a non-CE marked medical device can also have real commercial consequences. For one, you are much more exposed to a product liability claim if someone is harmed by your non-CE marked medical device. At the same time, your product liability insurance is unlikely to cover a non-CE marked medical device because your device is not complying with law. And so you will be paying out of pocket yourself in the event of a successful claim by someone who's been harmed. On top of that, you are also likely to be in breach of any warranties which you have given in your contracts with customers relating to the compliance of your product with applicable law, which often provides grounds for your customers to terminate those supply contracts with you. So CE marking really is mandatory both in legal and in practical terms. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Goodbye.